I feel like what happened uh, under the Trump administration was an invitation to um, show uh, uh, the the ugly underbelly of of our country. And is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? It's not. It's not a pretty sight for sure. But it's been there. And the fact that it's very loud right now, it's 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 scary. But at least we know about it. At least we know how bad it really is because that's how we can elicit change. Well, I have repeatedly told the story that at Disney Gay Days week in June, some of my favorite parties don't tell anybody, but they've been the girls in Wonderland parties. I love the oh, enthusiasm, uh, really, the authentic, pure joy that uh, the participants at the girls' parties at uh, Gay Days represents is amazing. At Queer News Tonight, we talk a lot about gay boys all the time. Come on, we're in Wilton Manors, Fort Lauderdale. But today we get to talk about the girls, and I'm really excited about it. And uh, I get to talk about it with Mariah Hansen, the high priestess of one of the largest queer, lesbian, non-binary events in the world. You know it as the Dinah Palm Springs. This is the longest running women's event of its kind in America. And the Dinah makes a triumphant 2023 return September 20 to 24 at the celebrated Margaritaville Hotel in Palm Springs. Welcome Mariah Hansen to Unapologetically Queer. Oh, and what an honor to be here. Thank you. Uh, I have to uh, get it right out of the way because we did never make any assumptions. Uh, you are unapologetically queer. Uh, I have been my whole life. Yes, your whole <laughs> life. Right, exactly. So it, it gives us an excellent opportunity to um, uh, talk about uh, what happens in the uh, in the girls' community. First off, I want to, before we talk about the dying, I want to talk about your early days. I read a lot about you. And I understand you used to throw parties uh, when you were in college. And back in 1996, I read, you brought the idea of a celebration to Northern California and created or was instrumental in the creation of the Monterey Women's Festival. And that's how uh, that started. Tell me about that experience and, and your desire, even in the 90s, to create uh, a woman-centric uh, music festival. Well, I actually started doing women's events in 1989 um, mm. at nightclub events in San Francisco and then segued into the Dinah in 1991. Uh, and it was such a huge success and such a perfect formula that I brought that concept to Monterey in 1996. And I did that for six or seven years. So it's important to me uh, to bring these kind of spaces to the queer women's community because we have so few spaces to begin with and currently we're losing a good percentage of the spaces we've enjoyed for years so things events like the dyna become even more important in order to create that safe haven and that ability to experience the inspiration and community that we feel when we come together you know, it's, uh, it's interesting to me. I've been to events all over the world um, and uh, love Mykonos and love uh, Sigis in, in Europe and, and so many events <clears throat> in the United States, North America. For women's events, uh, promoters of women's events are not nearly as common in LGBTQ yes. community. Yes. Um, you're a promoter. And so for our audience that are going, well, um, kind of trying to figure out who Mariah is, that's essentially, am I getting a term that applies to you correctly? You're a promoter, but it's of queer women events. Is that right? I, do, I mean, it, it's a shared title. So I, I was a promoter for a good deal in my career where I was promoting women's events in other venues. Um, but I'm also a producer. So I'm producing a large scale event and I'm responsible for uh, every aspect of that production. And you have a brand, uh, which I, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. There's just a nuance difference. Uh, well, and, and actually, yeah. that's what I was going to ask you. The nuance between, and I love that, by the way. Uh, no, 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 I'm a producer. I, I'm not a promoter. I'm a producer. <laughs> I love that. Well, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a promoter, too. But a promoters, promoters can be a standalone, and you can also have wear the promoter hat under the 
umbrella of being a producer. And so, to that, to yeah. that fact, um, you have a very. Um, please forgive me if it it, it might sound. Uh, well, however it might sound, you have a very. How can you cute... ask me to forgive you when you have a show called Unapologetic? Uh, you're absolutely right. Thank you for <laughs> slipping that out, and thank you for the branding. And let me uh, let me push the branding right back at you. You have this brand called Club Skirts. Yes. Tell me about that. What? Uh, that's such a cute sure. name. I love that name. It is cute, isn't it? Um, I don't use it that much anymore, to be honest with you. The dyna is attached to it in some respects, but that's also kind of part of the transformation of the event. So Club Skirts was a nightclub I did in San Francisco. And the tagline was skirt the mainstream. And this was during a time long, long ago when a tagline like that would make sense because we were not included in mainstream in any way, shape or form from my perspective. And we are now. So it, uh, thankfully that tagline doesn't even um, really apply doesn't as much. And, and the play yeah. on words when you created that is uh, <clears throat> just making sure that I'm clear. Uh, skirting, yeah. uh, skirting the the straight uh, general community, and skirt of using like. the play a play of words of women, and you were doing yes. both, right? Oh, okay, and, very uh, clever. I, I, literally, um, and I, um, I I was an English major, and so I, I used to have a lot of fun with uh, playing with words. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and now, uh, Maria, one of the things they for sure want to get uh, to is. Um, uh, Wilton Drive. We are. We, we always make the joke. I've been to Palm Springs many times. Um, sure. We always make the joke with our our brothers and and sisters and non-binary in West Hollywood. No, no, no. We're actually the gayest place on Palm, uh, gayest place on planet Earth. And then Palm Springs chimes in and says, "Oh, no, 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 no. It's us." And and we go yeah. back and forth. Um, you give me an excellent opportunity because I have heard about the dine up my entire life. But sure. uh, I have always tagged it to Dinah Shore. And I want to try uh -huh. to get this clarity out for all of the gay guys that have no idea of any concept of what we're talking about here. First off, of Dinah Shore. And for, uh, sure. for the uninformed, she was a fabulous uh, talk show host and a singer. Yes. Uh, she was married yes. to Burt Reynolds, uh, famous for the golf tournament in Palm Springs. I want to just get it right out there. The Dinah for... Uh, the lesbian and queer women community was it a motivation of her name of uh, from Dinah Shore? Is that correct or not correct? Uh, well, yes, yes. Um, again, uh, these answers are a little more complex. So, Dinah Shore, we all should keep her in our memory because she lent her name to a very important golf tournament, the Nabisco. Dinah Shore Golf Tournament, in order to increase the visibility of women's sports. And in doing so, she helped raise the level of money that they would win. And she was a tennis player, from what I understand. But mm -hmm. she knew that she could help to create parity. And she did. And I give her, I always, I love talking about it because I don't think people recognize her important service to women's sports in, in doing that. The tournament was a very important tournament and lesbians started, you know, flocking to the tournament one by one, two by two, you know, we're like rabbits. So eventually there was hundreds and hundreds of lesbians viewing this golf tournament and someone prior to me thought, God, we should throw a party. And so there started, parties started cropping up around the tournament. I came in 1991 with a very different concept of not just a party, but a weekend experience where we were creating our own Dino world. And I took hotels over 100% rather than 50 rooms here or 25 rooms there. And, um, and there was a lot of risk to that at the time, but I felt like all the ingredients were there to make this happen. And it did. So, um, so yes, it's, it's, it's in homage to, Dinah Shore and in recognition of all that she had done in her lifetime to help raise the visibility of women in sports. You know, I, I want to ask you in, in this excellent opportunity to uh, talk uh, to uh, the creator of the Dinah. 
I repeatedly heard uh, for decades uh, this comment uh, among gay men that the assumption was Dinah Shore was a lesbian, and that was the connection to the party. But actually, that's not true, is it? No, I don't think so. But anybody who's married to Burt Reynolds is, or dating him might be suspect. <laughs> However, exactly, exactly <laughs> no, right. she she was not a lesbian, and she has a, a wonderful daughter. And I, I I think she just was a really cool woman um, who never told us we couldn't use her name because I, I I've never met her. I can't speak for her, but I just think she was super hip and progressive, and yeah. thought it probably might have thought it was kind of cool that yeah. this outcrop had you know come up around the tournament that celebrated women yeah that's it's really interesting to me because it's a, a reflection of allyship and uh absolutely and that's, and that's what i yeah. think of uh with the uh, label of your event called the dino um let's talk about palm springs a minute for uh, for those of us on the east coast especially uh in in florida of course you know we're we're uh, we're a mega uh, circuit party is an old fashioned phrase. I know you're not a circuit party, but um, but large major gatherings like uh, what will happen uh, this month in Palm Springs. Uh, I'm in Fort Lauderdale and and uh, in Wilton Manors. We're just we're uber gay. Our entire city commission uh, is gay. Uh, and so is Palm Springs. And um, we have a mayor uh, that is gay uh, of Fort Lauderdale, and so is Palm Springs. So I've got to ask you, uh, the leading um, uh, lesbian, queer woman's voice for the major women's event in Palm Springs, uh, which community is better, Fort Lauderdale or Palm Springs? <laughs> well, I've never been to Fort Lauderdale, so I can't answer that question. Oh, um, my. And I actually, even if I had um, been, I, I now I need to go. I, I, I don't think either would be better. I mean, I yeah. Florida, unfortunately, has some very questionable politics, but but certainly the Floridians should not be punished for that. And so, I mean, there's a that's a tricky road that we're all going down. I have a lot of friends in Florida. Um, I've been to Miami several times, um, and I, I mean, I just think it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, area that needs a little bit of, of vibrational rising in terms of, of politics, but Florida is gorgeous. It's wonderful. So I don't, I'm not going, well, I wouldn't tell you any place is better than another. I would tell you that each place has its own charm and attraction and that we need to go wherever we go and really dive into whatever that place calls to you. So I'd say they're equal. You know, another uh, thing. Yeah, unapologetically. Uh, you know, another thing that's interesting to me about the Dinah and being in Palm Springs, Jeffrey Sanker created a, a world-renowned yeah. event uh, of, the, of the White Party. And, and I just think it's interesting in a city the size of Palm Springs, um, obviously an uber LGBTQ uh, and embracing uh, and allied community. It's interesting that one of the biggest boy events in the world is in Palm Springs and the biggest women's event is in the same place. What is it about Palm Springs that attracts the, the diversity of uh, we're something for everyone? What do you think it is about Palm Springs? Um, I'm going to tell you that I think that its proximity to uh, Los Angeles is is probably a very uh, uh, strong point for how easily it's become such a important destination because we get a lot of celebrities at the event, and it's because it's a two hour drive, and I think that also raises the profile of the Dyna, and it did for for Jeffrey because that's a fun aspect of attending the diners. You never know who you're going to run into who in the pool. Yeah. And it can be really exciting. <clears throat> but in addition to that, Palm Springs, it's beautiful. It has incredible weather. Uh, it's a resort town. So it is catering predominantly to visitors. And that's a nice aspect to throwing an event in a town like that because you know that wherever your customers are whether they're with you or out eating dinner somewhere they're being well taken care of and they're welcomed 
Um, Palm Springs, as you noted earlier, has a very strong LGBTQIA presence in their local government. And that assures us that we're not only welcome, but we're safe. Yeah. And I think today that's more important than ever. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly uh, here in Florida and many other places around the country. Let's talk about women's uh, lesbian and queer women's events specifically. Another thing that fascinates sure. me about um, the success uh, historically of the Dina, of course, you went through a pandemic like everyone else, uh, went into pause like everyone else. But but sure. it seemed like um, uh, the men's events <clears throat> in our community bounced back faster. They're they're um, they're they're so much more plentiful in terms of choice in America. What is it um, about, What, from your eye, and, and really you're an expert eye of lesbian and queer events. We've reported, for example, we do Queer News Tonight every night at eight o'clock and, and have for, for three years. We've reported repeatedly about what we see going on in the lesbian community. You've already referenced it in, in our conversation. We've reported there are only 26 lesbian bars and major spaces left in all of America. What do you think is happening in, in uh, the lesbian and queer uh, women's community in America? Why is this happening? And, and uh, what are your thoughts about what you're seeing? I, I think, first off, that there have never been uh, a, uh, a huge amount of lesbian or queer women identified spaces is long you know i've been queer for five decades or four decades and it, there just hasn't been a lot and i think there's very nuanced cultural differences between um how men play and how women play and i think that um that that reflects in our spaces because women tend to um and i'm really stereotyping but they tend to nest more. So they'll meet, they might meet in a bar, they might meet in a nightclub, but they fall in love and they stop going out to the bar and the nightclub. I th I think men might still enjoy that whole play aspect in a way that I think women don't. But I will also say in men's defense that the longest relationships that, that I know of are with gay men. So that kind of stereotype of, it doesn't always hold true. I just think, I think generally it's the best argument that I can come up with for you right now. But I, I do think there's, there's, there's a kernel of truth to it that we just don't, we don't party in the same way. All right. Are you, are you uh, confident? Uh, are you optimistic? Uh, that this may change, or do you think the trend that we've watched over this last number of years is going to continue for for the L of LGBTQ? As far as women's spaces, yeah, yes, I'm actually I'm I'm hopeful, and here's why: I think that there's also the complication of that we're much more comfortable in mainstream spaces, so um, that makes us feel like we can go out to a straight bar, we can go out to a straight restaurant, meet all of our friends there. We don't necessarily need to go to a LGBTQIA identified destination. However, I also think that we have our own culture. And I also think that our culture and our lifestyles are under assault again. And as that happens, I think that that feeling of safety in mainstream society starts to disintegrate a little bit and our own spaces will become more important again because that's where we're going to feel safe. And I think there's a very important lesson to be learned, especially for younger people. And that's who I'm speaking to right now is that our fight for civil rights just isn't over. And we're seeing right now how easy it is. Easy to take away women's rights, to take away LGBTQIA rights. I, our, our right to marriage was subtly uh, threatened by one of our Supreme Court justices. So I think activism is alive and hopefully well, and it, and it really rests on younger people because it all moves up. 
And so I, I know that younger people are very passionate, but it's it easy as it looks in major metropolitan areas to be out and mainstream and feel comfortable. It's an illusion. Yeah. We it's have to think of our entire community. It's interesting in conversation. Um, um, in the past, I, you know, I was, I, I've been involved in a number of, um, of major events. Uh, Sanker um, uh, remarked to me on, on multiple occasions that he viewed what he was doing there and in, in Puerto Vallarta as a symbol of activism, that it was an, it was a opportunity for community to come together and be activists for our community and then take that to places all over their state or all over America, or really all over the world. Um, tell us a, a, a little bit, uh, as you make that connection of the activism, tell us about uh, the Dinah and, and for, those, for uh, those that have not uh, been to it and those that may not be as aware of it as they should, kind of help walk us through. First off, uh, Margaritaville, to, for, for those that might not know, tell us a little bit about uh, what a hotel like that hosting uh, this big mammoth event would be like. I love the space. It used to be the old Riviera. And so it's this glamorous old Hollywood style hotel in Palm Springs. I've worked out of it over my 32 year career in Palm Springs for about a third of it. So the space itself lends itself perfectly to the Dinah. Margaritaville has, um, their management is wonderful. Uh, there's a lot of LGBTQIA people working at the hotel and in uh, management positions. And so we have that kind of support. You can't be in Palm Springs no matter what flag uh, your hotel is raising and not be deeply connected to the LGBTQIA community because we have such a strong presence in that city. But Margaritaville... Uh, has been a great friend to us and their their new man is incredible. We're so excited to be working with them because they get it. Their legacy event in Palm Springs um, by the city. So they realize the importance of earmarking certain events that represent diversity, inclusivity, women, uh, any kind of a fringe. You know, they, they they want to recognize that as something that the city not only welcomes but encourages and is very proud to have so uh when you're working under those kind of uh conditions it, it just really lends itself perfectly for an event like the dinah uh, margaritaville itself is just um you know it, it, it's it's got a huge convention ballroom that elvis presley has played at you know the rat pack i mean it's got lots of of old hollywood history um and then it's got this pool area that's just perfect for what we do so we're really happy to be there you know uh, so you have to have the the right address uh, which is clear yes, uh, at, at margaritaville you do now um uh, tell us about uh, some of the things that you do for the extended long weekend. What uh, what are the parties like, and who performs? And sure, sure, sure. We're the Dinah's become very famous in the music industry for picking the the next big thing in talent. So we've had some pretty triple uh, A list names on our stage over the years, from Katy Perry and Lady Gaga to you know uh, uh, Jesse Reyes, um, Pat Benatar, Chaka Khan. Um, uh, you know, and on and on, uh, baby. It's been uh, a really wonderful experience inviting these artists onto our, our stage and having them say yes and then watching them take off. So that's been fun. Um, uh, yeah. Entertainment uh, this year. Sorry, uh, yeah, so this Dinah, year is uh, Princess no Thank you. Princess Nokia, um, Dochi, G Flip, um, Femme, Black Box. And then I have two new artists that we just gave a chance to Keanu Key and uh, Zana that we think are, are artists that should be signed. And so we wanted to give them exposure on a major stage. You know, I, uh, I, I start uh, my conversation with you uh, with <clears throat> a point that I've made. I do uh, Queer News tonight and it's happening out uh, with a broadcast partner, very uh, noted, uh, famous lesbian Faye Watt here in South Florida. And she invited me last year, of all of the years that I had been to Gay Days or OMW, 
for decades. I had never been to uh, the girls' party, and Allison Burgess and Pandora, <laughs> Aqua, Aqua Girl that they had produced yeah. for years, uh, went to Girls in Wonderland, and I went to uh, the Saturday afternoon pool party, and and I was old and jaded at gay days. I knew everything <laughs> about everything about everything, and I went into this event and. It was breathtakingly stunning how much fun and joy uh, yeah. was going on at the event, and and I went back this year, and I went to two parties uh, this year. Ooh. What what is it about uh, the women? Uh, you know, from my gay eye, gay community eye, um, when we s don't see women quite as visible, certainly not as visible as we see the the gay guys. When they get together at an event like yours, how do you explain the joy that seems to explode when you when you offer an event like the the Dino for women? I think for women, it is just as much about um, creating community as it is about music and um, parties. But it, it's about actually being together with community and and that feminine energy that 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 just is explosive at events like this all that estrogen is just it's pretty powerful but community is really important it's not it's not necessarily about meeting your next love it's about being together and celebrating our lives together and living out loud and being inspired by each other and meeting other women from all over the world so there's that aspect to it that's very powerful and that's where the joy is created you know, I would I would imagine uh, you'd be very proud of this observation. One of the things that was the most shocking after how much jubilance I was watching was how uh, accepted uh, and accepting my presence was. Um, Allison uh, brought me up on the stage and introduced me, and and awesome. <laughs> uh, and through the entire event and uh, around. Uh, the pool event people were so kind and it's like you know and yeah. i was a little i was a little uh, i wonder if i'm invading a space that i shouldn't be in in, in pushing in on and exactly the opposite was the yeah. result yeah. that was breathtaking yeah. what do you think about that in terms of how um uh lesbian and queer women and and gay men uh maybe we have this kind of stereotype that we we can't uh, we can't party and play together, but we actually can. I think two things. I think Allison and yes, they do an incredible job. I think that it's the promoter's job or the producer's job to create a vibe that gets kind of instilled with each guest that enters. And I think they, they get it in, in a way that not as many producers and promoters do. It's really important to be inclusive, and and if we're asking for tolerance, we have to be tolerant. It's just such a no-brainer. Um, so, there, my event is predominantly queer-identified women, but there are men there, and our stance has always been: if that bothers you, this probably isn't the event for you, mm -hmm. because we're about joy. We're not about getting. Uh, prickly about um, who's there. We're about embracing who's there and celebrating that we're all together. The common theme is celebrating our, our, our femaleness, but that doesn't mean that someone like you can come and not join in and go, yeah, and learn something and experience a community that's beautiful. So I, I, I think that's really critical to the success of events is tolerance and inclusivity. Well, there was a time uh, not that far back when some women were really uptight about um, trans men coming. And, and I was just like, why? Why would we make anyone, especially some trans men, had gone to the Dinah as queer women and they transitioned? Why would they want to go to the Dinah again? It's a blast. And so I think that that modeling and messaging of inclusivity, and that means inclusivity, uh, um, is critical. And then somehow, as a producer, it's our job to make sure that it remains a queer women's event. Yeah, it's so. Do men and women do do men and women um, uh, party together? I I think that's another nuanced area because. 
they're doing different things. So like you can get, um, you can get, uh, in a, in a large guys event, um, and, you know, and it's, you know, minimal clothes and dancing and sweating and just, you know, it's got this different feel to it. And then you would get, you know, if you mixed half that group with women, they'd be like, they're not, you know, they're not, it's just not the same um, experience, right? You know, they're not, they're not necessarily doing that. And I think that that is probably why it, it's not because we don't love each other and we do, um, uh, but it's because we kind of do that differently yeah, and definitely. if and, and so the women that like that or love men's events that just like you know the clothes off and you know just the um the rawness of it and um and the men that like that community and that just feel good um you know they're at the dyno so um you know it, it all works in the end but i don't know that we would be um mixing 50 50 i i just think those nuances that um, right, heard might and, get in the and way. understood. Mar uh, I want to uh, finish up and and ask you. Uh, you've touched it on it a little, but I want to uh, draw a, a clear point to it. Uh, sure. I understand uh, you served two terms on the board of Equality California. Equality I did. Calif Equality California, in my opinion, Equality California and Equality Florida are the two um, preeminent. Uh, equality state organizations in America. Amazing things come out of both uh, organizations. Um, so having those two terms as a board member, you really do have an expert eye, especially for lesbian and queer women representation uh, from your eye and your longevity of what you have done in, in uh, producing uh, events like the Dinah. From your eye, what do you think is going on You've said, you know, we're. It seems like we're refighting this all again. What What does your eye tell you that we're watching? Maybe something that that a lot of LGBT listening to your voice uh, that are confused or scared they don't understand. Uh, what What do you What do you see is happening? Um, I mean, you know, it's a political question. I'm going to give you a political answer. I feel like what happened uh, under the Trump administration was an invitation to um, show uh, uh, the the ugly underbelly of, of our country. And is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? It, it, it's not it's not a pretty sight for sure, but it's been there. And the fact that it's very loud right now, it's 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 scary. But at least we know about it. At least we know how bad it really is because that's how we can elicit change. You can't change things you don't know about. You can only change things you know about. But I don't think the way to change it is to meet it at its level. It's, um, it's too ugly. And so we need to meet it um, uh, with a high intention. And we need to meet it with grace and compassion a lot of this is um, really economic and um, and it's educational. And um, those are areas that we've been let down by our country. And uh, we need to work as citizens to make sure that we're all doing okay and that um, all boats rise with this tide. And so there's work that's LGBTQIA work, and then there's work that's just work because our country's a little broken right now, and and we need to be part of that solution. Mm. Very well said. Uh, it's a confusing time, and uh, uh, measured I words of how we deal uh, with what we're facing. Um, and last question about uh, coming back to uh, the Diana, getting ready to happen. Um, one of the big lesbian and queer women's events in the world. In the longevity of the many decades that uh, you've done this event, do you have a single moment that you would go, gosh, that was it. This moment was it. Do you have one of those? I have so many. I have a great career. Um, I, I, I get to do what I love. Uh, one, I'm going to tell you two. Uh, one's very personal, and um, and then one's just, uh, just fun. But, um, you know, I... My mother, who's not with us anymore, um, she was this great activist. And there was one year when I had her at the diner, and, and people just loved it because so many people would just meet her and say hello because 
their mothers weren't talking to them and they thought it was so cool that my mother was at the dyno and um, I had this opportunity I booked Chaka Khan one year and we both loved her and there's this great photo of me almost dragging her because I was late to this photo op with Chaka Khan and my management team and I just I just love that moment someone caught it it was really organic um, it was not posted all this me dragging my mom but um, I, I love that because I, I feel really fortunate that I was able to share what I do and how important what I do is with my mom. Uh, that's, that's a great feeling for me. And then on a larger scale, um, when you're standing near the stage, Saturday is our biggest pool party, and you're looking out at this sea of happy, smiling women, and you can feel the joy. It's 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 palpable um that's a pretty powerful feeling to have to know that you helped to create that yeah. they take on a life of their own i don't take responsibility for that i certainly set the stage and then something happens because of the environment that we create that takes off and it's magical it's just magical so um i i get to experience that every year you know i love that uh i love that answer mariah because in my experience of girls in uh, girls in Wonderland, which caught me completely by surprise, when I went on the stage, you get a completely different view of of the big gigantic event than when you're in the midst uh, of it. Yeah. And when I went yes. on stage, I went on stage with Feywa and Allison uh, is there, and we're taking pictures, etc. And I got to watch the sea of women that are having yeah. an experience that is very rare in America, very rare yep. in the world. Yes. And yep. uh, and I completely understand what you just said in the special uh, nature of this long history of the Dinah for you, that that's a moment. And I compare and contrast, when you look at the who's who's list that has performed at this music festival, you didn't say Lady Gaga was the moment. You said all of the people <laughs> that are at the party is the moment which says everything yeah. about uh, Mariah Hansen and everything about the Dyna. You've got to check the event out. Sure. I encourage everyone, of course, uh, the women will and already have, and uh, to the rest of our community, you should learn a lot more about this because it's very important uh, for all of us to think about all of us, the LGBTQ plus community, and especially today we get to focus on lesbian and queer women. If you're interested, more information on uh, hotel, uh, tickets, etc., all can be seen at thedina.com. Uh, Mariah Hansen, uh, thank you so much uh, we wish you all the success. We know you're right on the edge. You're probably uh, on uh, nail biting edge uh, for the <laughs> production bit, yes. of the 23rd <laughs> event. We wish you all the luck. We know it's going to be a mammoth success. And thank you very much for joining us today on Unapologetically Queer. Absolutely my pleasure. Thank you.